Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. And it's that that I want to talk about. For the last three years or so, in this kind of journey of mine to 100,000 subscribers, I've been saying that at the beginning of every single video. And I just wanted to talk about, I've, I've sort of thought about making this video for a long time and I've decided now's the time to make it. And I know this is not going to be anything to do with music or music production as such, so like, I'm sorry about that if that's what you're looking for, but I wanted to address the question of why do I always say this at the beginning of videos? And there's a really good reason for it, which, I, which not many people are aware of. And I don't want to sound pretentious, but it's because I really do hope you are well. And at the same time, I know that many of you are not well. I know that many of you are struggling with different aspects of your life. And I just wanted to speak with you directly now because I think it's really important in this age of social media to understand that not everything is as it seems. And one of the worst things for people when they're going through troubled times especially people with you know troubled times in their mind mental health issues so to speak one of the awful things can be is when you're looking on Facebook and Twitter and everything is that everybody else's life looks like it's in order like they've got it all together like somehow you're the odd one out who can't sort of get your life in order and be happy and I just wanted you to be aware that you're not alone that most people out there either are or have really struggled at some time in their life with getting it together and just being happy and you know functioning really really well you know and so I decided that if it's any help to anybody at all whatsoever that I would tell a little bit of my story and I am talking not about troubles I've faced in my life um, from, uh, you know, just physical issues, or what have you, health problems or financial problems, that kind of thing. But I'm specifically going to address the mental health issues that I've had. And uh, I'm going to give you a bit of a story so that you can hopefully understand and, yeah understand that not everything's always as it seems now I don't want you to be worried my life is good at the moment um, and it's really really been especially good for the last three years um, thank you to everybody who supported the channel in that way but it really hasn't always been that way and I know that many of you may look at what someone like me does and think oh you know how does he have it all together he's he's uh he's got these subscribers he's making music he's got all that gear behind him in the studio you know perhaps you've got no money or an ability to buy gear and let me talk about that a little bit first i've actually spent the majority of my life the vast majority of my life i'm 54 by the way now having really hardly any money not much money at all especially to spend on music gear you know <laughs> it's been a really recent time and if you look at some of my early videos on the channel I had a lot less gear there but um yeah I struggled a lot and a lot of the reasons why I struggled was because I was to have the money to buy gear was because there was lots of other things going on in my life over the last 30 years or more I have suffered an, a lot of the time for big chunks of my life with a combination of depression and anxiety um, I think one of the doctors I saw once said that my depression was a result of my anxiety and let me just kind of give an idea of how that played out for me I suffered a little bit of anxiety when I was a child, even as young as 12 years old, that kind of thing. But something happened to me when I was 20, 
22 or 23 years old, 22 years old, that had an absolutely profound effect on me, a massive profound effect on me. At that stage I was with my uh, wife. We hadn't had a long relationship, it was one of those things. We decided to get married, um, spontaneously kind of thing as young people do sometimes. And then not too long after that, we found that she was pregnant. And uh, the great news after that was that we found that she was pregnant with twins, which was just tremendously, tremendously exciting for us. Now, um, around about six months, just over six months into the pregnancy, we woke up one night and there was blood everywhere. Something had gone wrong. And so we went to uh, we went to the hospital. Of course, as you do, uh, it was a, it was an emergency, and she was taken in and um, sort of stabilised, I guess. Um, and then uh, I think it was only a, maybe a week or two later. I was staying at a friend's house and um, got a phone call late at night and was told come up to the hospital immediately your wife's going to give birth she's gone into labor as i say um, for those of you who don't know i'm sure you do uh, but um, uh, women are normally nine months pregnant um, six months pregnant going to labor is not good she was 26 weeks pregnant um, so i went up to the hospital and uh, was taken to a uh, almost like an operating theater went in there there was two uh, groups of uh, doctors many of them and uh, the next thing I can remember was that there were these two babies really 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 small babies I had no idea about these things at the time I was pretty ignorant as young men sometimes are about these things and so I was actually kind of just happy I was I was a father oh there's these um two babies are here they're my they're both my sons um but they were very very tiny very very tiny uh, uh, less than a kilogram I, I seem to remember uh, around about 800 grams roughly both of them seven to eight hundred grams very very small indeed and I, um, you know, we, we went ahead and named them. And I'll tell you, <laughs> just the, the music link here is that um, as a very young man, I'd been uh, a big fan of Elvis Presley's. And Elvis Presley had had a twin brother who ironically died, I guess, and his name was Aaron. So um, I'd always had it in my head that I liked that name. And I always said, my firstborn son will be called Aaron. So... Um, the first of these two young fellas out of the womb uh, was called Aaron and the other one was called Curtis. So time went on and of course they were taken to um, an intensive care unit and, uh, and they were both in incubators, you know, as they are. And it was just, they were just very, very small. It was very obvious that they were tiny. And kind of, they really should have died right away, to be honest with you, they were, they were too small. But we were very fortunate at the time that a test was uh, taking place in the hospital for a new uh, kind of uh, treatment uh, called surfactant, um, which was able to uh, mature the lungs of babies very, very quickly. And, uh, and so they were given that and, and they actually did pretty well for a while. Um, Curtis, the second born one, had lots and lots of problems. He had lung collapses, he had a hole in the heart, um, lots and lots of problems. He was being taken care of a lot, very intense. We were very, very worried about him. Um, Aaron, uh, my first born son, was small but didn't have the same 
problems at all. We did not get the chance, obviously, to hug them or anything. They they stayed in the incubator all the time. We did have some hands on, and that they encourage us to, you know, change their little diapers and, you know, little bits of care that we could do for them through the holes in the incubator. But we didn't we didn't hold them at all at that stage. And then after, I know this may seem strange, but after around ten days or so, we felt. Because we, we were at hospital all the time, all the time, yeah, morning, noon, night, or, or when we could be. We, we did go home, but we were straight back to the hospital as soon as we could. But after about 10 days, we felt we're out of the woods here. Things are, things are not too bad. Things are looking okay for these guys. Things are stabled. So that stabilized a fair amount. So uh, on that particular on this particular day after 10 days we didn't rush to the hospital we actually went to my parents house and uh on the way to the hospital but we went to their house first and my dad uh, cooked us a lovely big english breakfast and uh, we enjoyed that and we felt a little relaxed for the first time since the birth so we uh, then went to the hospital and as soon as we walked into the hospital, I mean, I can only say that we faced mayhem. Um, somebody rushed up to us and said, where have you been? We've been trying to contact you. Remember, this is the days before mobile phones, what have you. Um, they said, there's a problem. And uh, so we, we went, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't do this. So we went into the ICU where they were, and um, there was a big, big, well, it seemed to me a crowd of doctors and nurses around Aaron. And uh, we didn't know what was going on, but there'd obviously been, obviously been some kind of a problem. And there was a lot of activity. There was a lot of medications being administered. There was a lot of fussing around. I don't know how long this went on for, but me and my wife just stood in the corner of the room just watching. And uh, at some point, um, they all stopped. All of a sudden, everybody stopped. And uh, the, the doctor turned around to me. My surname was different back then. My surname was Taplin. That's a whole other story. Uh, but the doctor, the, the main paediatrician there, who was Dr. Kumar, um, he turned around to me and just looked at me and he said to me, um, he said, uh, Mr. Taplin, I'm sorry. <clears throat> he said, Mr. Taplin, I'm sorry. I can't save your son. And uh, he said, would you like to hold him before he dies? And... Uh, And um, they took him out and handed him to me and I held him and he died in my arms. And uh, life changed in a second, you know. I went from being a kind of a naive person. I guess we're just young, just young. I hadn't experienced life and um, and I felt I felt naivety leave my body. I don't know how to explain it. I, I instantly, um, I handed him after he died to someone and I dropped to my knees. I felt the life sucked out of me. Everybody knows that to lose a child is difficult. Every parent fears it because they naturally know how difficult it will be. And it is. But when these things happen to you, like when, when uh, something obviously tragic happens to you and you become later depressed or what have you, you don't just sit in a corner and be sad. Sometimes you behave in all kinds of ways which are not very pleasant to be around. And I'm just going to hand on heart tell you, I don't want to dress this up. 
many times I was not a very pleasant person to be around after that. Uh, it came out um, in anxiety, big time, which then also comes out in anger and depression. And I had a lot of love and a lot of good people over the years, but um, it affected the way I was with my work. So I was very un unstable in the workplace. I was very unstable in relationships, whether that was with a partner or whether it was with uh, just friends, you know. Um, I could have sudden outbursts, um, very reckless at times with money, um, all that kind of stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm really pleased, I'm not used, trying to use this experience of mine as an excuse for bad behaviour, it's not, it's not that at all, but I definitely have to be honest and say to you, and I know every, lots of you think I'm a really nice guy and all that, and I am, <laughs> but I haven't always been, and, um, and I'm human. So, as, as, as the years went on, just like some of you who are watching, who may have you know, all kinds of different reasons why, but definitely I knew what depression was. That feeling of just not wanting to do anything, not wanting to get out of bed, not seeing the point, in me, why I was here, all kinds of dark, dark thoughts. And um, I also went through all the cycles, yeah? I read the books, I followed different gurus, I followed different ways of thinking, went round around those things, and, and also that was frustrating in itself because, you know, I was thinking, I've tried to do everything here to change the way I think about life and what have you, but I'm still going around in circles and still getting depressed and uh, all those kinds of things. And uh, that kind of stopped around about, um, I'm gonna say about six years ago or so, when I'd had enough, uh, another relationship breakdown had happened not just with a partner, but with, uh, with friends, family, all kinds of people, which I was at least partially responsible for, if not completely. And I found myself very alone, burnt, had burnt all of my bridges, uh, was very isolated, completely alone actually, physically. And I decided that I couldn't go on living like that so I didn't kill myself obviously but I decided that I had to change Re not talk about change or think about change or anything but really change the way I was thinking about life as a person and I actually spent a lot of time in isolation I spent a few months in a house completely alone I didn't listen to music, I didn't watch TV, I didn't do it. I was very quiet and learned to be alone, which I hadn't coped with before that very well. And uh, really made some changes about the way I, I look at life. And a lot of it was letting go, a lot of, loads of it was letting go of ideas. It wasn't so much learning new things as just unlearning a few things. <laughs> so, um, That happened, and over time, over many, many months, I got to a really good place, really, really good place. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to give the impression that I had some sort of epiphany or an, a moment of enlightenment, because I still have difficult days now, of course I do. But I don't suffer from depression anymore. I get a little bit of anxiety, but nothing as bad as I used to. Um, a doctor who I went to see, I'll, I'll tell you first of all that I, I see therapy now, whether I see a therapist or what have you, as not something I go to necessarily in emergency, but something that is uh, like you would go to the gym, you know, I just keep it topped up. 
And I was facing a particular struggle in life uh, two or three months ago, uh, sorry, two or three years ago, but a little bit after I started the channel. And I won't go into the details here because it involves someone and I, I can't really tell the story without saying who it is and I don't want to betray their, um, you know, their privacy. But uh, there was a difficulty happening with someone. I thought, oh, I'm in danger here. Something could be, like, it could sort of get me back into my depression. So I'll, before things get bad, I'll go and see someone and chat through things. And it was a new therapist. And it was only at that stage, because I was displaying, I, I, I do, <laughs> not even in a jokey way, but I was displaying some um, things that, that often go with anxiety, and that's uh, compulsive obsessive disorder. Um, I, I can be very much like that. And I was doing a few things which were taking a lot of my time of my day, safety measures, which were uh, becoming a problem. So anyway, uh, they, they told me that um, that they actually felt that a lot of my anxiety over the years um, was almost like it wasn't like so much anxiety that I was kind of suffering from PTSD and it had never been addressed um, over the, uh, not even the death of my son, but the death of the, my son in my arms, the, the physical nature of actually holding your son in your arms as he takes his last breath was i just had i'd always known it troubled me but i hadn't realized how um it made me behave in ways it, and quite often in ways i'm not very proud of to be honest with you and things you know, since before I started the channel, have, have been really fantastic. I was concerned. It was a concern of mine when I entered into the business or the world of YouTube. Of how I was going to react to negativity. Um, at times, you come under attack as a YouTuber. And if you're ever a person who's suffered from anxiety or depression and insecurity, um, then that can be a really problematic thing for you. And I do come under attack from different people once in a while. It's not very significant because the vast majority of my day is spent reading comments of people saying thank you. And, you know, I know that 99.9% .9 of you are that and thank you so much for that by the way it, it's it's never lost on me and I never get tired of it <laughs> um, but yeah occasionally someone wants to have a go um, but there's two levels to that you know I realize that other people also suffer uh, from mental health issues and sometimes the way that they vent that is by attacking a youtuber you know um, and you know, it's, it's a truth in life that as you are perceived as becoming more successful, then uh, people also become very jealous as well, you know. Does it ever get to me? Um, yes. But not in the same way it used to. Not in the way it used to before that time six years ago when I made some changes. It's short-lived. Uh, I've got a self-belief. In myself I know I'm a good person um, even though I do some silly things still once in a while and I just perceive it as their problem you know and I try and have some sympathy for them where I can but mostly I don't entertain it much I don't respond to it um, it's their it's their journey and, and, and that's that but that's not the point of this video the point of this video is why do I say at the beginning of every video I hope you're well because I genuinely know what it's like to not be well to be struggling to that it, all of your problems in life have built up to a point where sometimes you can't even function I know what it's like to feel like the black sheep to look out there and see look it looks like everyone else is doing so well for themselves that Everyone else has got it together, 
you know, even like I say, you look, you go, oh, he's got all the gear, he's got all the subscribers, and that is true, that is true, that I'm very, very, very blessed as a person, but what I want to say to you, just you, is it, please believe me, it will not, or does not always need to be like this for you. I had decades of it, and I found a way past. It's so hard, I know it's so hard, but please don't give up. Please, please, please don't give up. If it just means, if you, if you just do it for me, just keep going for another hour, another five hours, another day, yeah? Just one day, do it for me, please. Because it, I know you can feel like you don't have any hope, but there's always hope. There is, there's, even though you may not believe it right now, there's a way forward and you can do it. So yeah, uh, that's my message to you, to those individuals who are right now in the darkest parts of their life. Okay. So I'm sorry, uh, just to finish off, I'm sorry that this has been so far off track of my normal videos. Um, and I know some of you you know, perhaps we'd just rather see a cakewalk video and I promise I'll get straight back to that right away. But, uh, I hope that if it helps just one, I know this is a cliche, but it's just so true. If it helps one person, then I'm happy I made this video. Now, please, I'm just going to be blunt and open about this. If you're feeling suicidal, if you feel like you want to end your life, don't wait, reach out for help now. Reach for help right now, okay? Don't wait till tomorrow. I want you to reach for help now. So many of you are watching me from so many different countries in the world. I can't give you one helpline or, or what have you. I know here in Australia, Beyond Blue is a great organization to reach out for. I'm sorry I'm not familiar with the different organizations in the different countries, but reach out to one of those organizations. If it gets you through another day, if it just gives you some inkling of uh, perhaps there's a way forward, then I want that for you now, okay? I want you to one day, even if it may be months or years from now, to live the most incredible life that I now live where I know I'm valuable, I have amazing people who love me and support me. I'm not I'm talking about my family and friends. Uh, you guys too, though. My subscribers and supporters. Um, I finally believed in who I was. I stopped being try, trying to be something else for other people. And who I was was a guy who likes to talk about making music and a little bit about computers and stuff. Ah, I dig it. I really dig it. It's a lot of fun, yeah? I didn't know that anybody was really going to be interested in my style of talking about that kind of stuff or, the, you know, or what I had to say about it. But it turned out I'm the luckiest guy in the world because there was at least 100,000 people who thought, you know, they liked the way I told the stories. And so I feel like I'm a lottery winner, honestly. But I can promise you that a very short period of time ago in my life, I was it was it was darkness for me, complete darkness. You know, so please hang in there. Please do that for me. So, as I say, I'm Mike, and I really do hope you're well.